So let's take a look at a legal problem called is graph bipartite. So given an indirected graph, basically an undirected graph means that if no one is connected to no two, that means that no two is also connected to no one. So return true if and only if it is bipartite. So recall that a graph is bipartite if we can split its sets of nodes into two independent subsets A and B, such that every node in the graph has one node in B and one node in, another node in B. So one node in A and the other node in B. So what is really bipartite? Well, basically, if we have a graph like this, right, and then if we split it into two subsets, right, you can see that an, uh, one node, right, every node, every um, independent subset A and B, such that every edge in the graph has one node in B, sorry, one node in A and the other node in B, right? So in this case, zero. So we can divide the nodes into two subsets, zero and two, one and three, right? And basically one node is at subset A and the other node is at subset B. So node zero is connected to node three, and node 1 and node 2 is connected to node 1 and node 3, right? And a, a better way to define if it's a graph bipartite, if the graph is bipartite, is to color the, the nodes, right? Here you can see we color the nodes red, right? And then we color this, those two nodes in green. Basically, what we, the way how we identify if it's a bipartite is if the current node is red, then the adjacent node must be a different color than the current node. So in this case, this current node is red. The adjacent the adjacent node's color is green, right? So this is currently this node is a is at a good position for being a bipartite. Um, and then those two, you can see this is green, and then the adjacent node are red, which is different color than this this current node. So so far so good, right? And this node as well. So in this case, this node is is red, and the adjacent nodes are different color than this current node. So is that, the, is that the correct position? So in this case, overall is a um, bipartite, right? It's gonna be true. So we know what is bipartite. Let's take a look at what is not. So basically for each node, the adjacent node must have a different color than the current nodes, right? Cur current nodes color. So is this a bipartite? Well, let's take a look. So the current node, let's say we're starting at this node. This node is gonna be, is gonna have a color of red. And this node right here, because those nodes are all adjacent nodes for this node, then they all have a different color than this node, so we all mark them in green. Now, if we were to check to see if this node is a, at a correct position, is that a, is at the um, is bipartite by, by simply check to see if adjacent nodes um, are different color than this current node. So in this case, adjacent nodes is green, which is different color than this node. So in this case, we get a false. This is not a bipartite, right? So let's take a look at another example. Here you can see we have another graph, right? Is this bipartite? Well, what we can do is this. We can check this. We can mark this node right here to a different color. Let's mark this to a red, right? So let's mark this red. And then we mark the adjacent nodes to a different color like green, right? And then we mark its adjacent node to a different color, red, right? And then this is now red. And then we also have to mark this adjacent node to red, 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 right? And we also mark this node's adjacent node to a different color than the current node. In this case, we mark it green, right? This is already green. And we also have to mark this node's adjacent node to a different color than the current node, green, green, and already exists. So in this case, we have a true, right? We have, this is a part, uh, bipartite. So and you can see this is a bipartite. Now what about this one? So what we can do is the same thing, right? In this case, we can mark this as red. This is green, right? And we know we will mark the adjacent node of this current node to a different color. Now we can mark it red. And we're also going to mark this node's adjacent node to a different color than the current node, red, red, and red. And we also have to mark this current node's adjacent node to a different color than the current node. So we have green, but we have a red here. So this will make this graph a not a bipartite, right? So in this case, we have false. So the way how we solve this problem, basically, we're just going to perform breadth search for um, traversing each and every single node, and um, basically make sure that the adjacent node 
are at different color with the current node, right? So uh, here, let's say we are going to have red and green, right? We're going to have two color, red and green. We're going to start at this node right here. We're basically just going to mark all the nodes that are adjacent to this node to a different color, let's say green, right? So current node, we mark it red. The adjacent node, we're going to mark it green. So green here and green here. Right. And then what we're going to do is just going to um, because we're doing buffer search, we're traversing level by level. So we're going to start with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark its adjacent node to red. So red here, red here. We know that this is already red, so we don't have to touch that. And then we can mark this red. Then we're going to move on to this node right here. Right. So we're going to. Uh, mark all the nodes that are adjacent to this node red, right? So now we mark this as red. And um, then what we're going to do is we're just going to move on to this node, right? This node, we mark all the adjacent node to green. And we realize that this node is red, right? This node, if it, this node is already red, right? If this node is already exists in the table and is red, then we know that this node, um, then we know that we, we, we found a graph that is not a by graph, right? So here, then what we had to do is just return false, okay? So to solve this problem, look, let's look at an example here. So you can see that in this example, basically we have a index zero, right? So this first element is index zero. So index zero is connected to one, right? Connected two, connected three. So that's why we have one, two, and three. These are index. And then for index one, we're connected to zero, we're connected to two, right? So that's why we have zero, two there. And for index two, we're connected to zero, one, and three, right? Zero, one, and three. That's why we have zero, one, and three there. And for index three, you can see that we're connected to zero and two, right? So that's why we have index zero and index three in this uh, in this array, right? And you can see that in the constraints for the the size of the array, right? For the size of the array, it could be zero, it could be n, right? It could be uh, between uh, zero and uh, less than n. Right. And that basically means that we could have a situation where we have a empty array. Basically, that means that we could have a node that's um, that's not like related, that's not connected to anything, any nodes in the graph. Right. So if that's the case, then what we have to do is we have to start to iterate each and every single uh, index right inside the array. Right. Because there could be a node that's uh, not related, that's not connected to the graph. So we have to start at each and every single position. So we're basically going to start from here. We do a BFS. We're going to mark the, the visit nodes to be visited, right? So these nodes will be visited. And then once we get to the index one, this node is already visited. Uh, so we just move on to the next index. In this case, two and three, they're all visited. But index four, they're not visited. So we're just going to visit this this joined uh, graph, right? And then we're going to mark the connected nodes to be visited. Um, so that this way we can ensure that we basically visit or traverse each and every single node that we have in our graph, right? So now let's take a look at how we can do this in code. What I did here is I have two colors, just like I mentioned, I have red and green. So red is represent one, green is represent two, and unvisit is represent zero, right? Because by default, when we create a table, right, when we create a table that keep track of the current node's color, we're going to have a size of n. And then this by default is basically unvisited. It's basically all zeros by default if we create an integer array, right? And then I have a queue and I define a queue. And then what I do here is that I basically iterate each and every single index that we have inside the graph, right? So in this case, first we check to see if this current position is unvisited, right? Remember the table, the table there is to keep track of the current index color, right? So if we unvisit, if this position is unvisited, that means that we can just continue, right? Otherwise, what we had to do is we have to add the current node onto the, or current index, right? Or index or node is the same thing right now. But basically, we add the current node to the queue, and then we set the current node's color to be green, so that what we're going to do is that we're going to do a BFS search, right? Uh, we're going to do a BFS search because, in this case, the current node is unvisited, right? And then the current color is unvisited, so we set to green. By default, right? We start with green and then we do a BFS and then try to see while the queue is not empty, we're just going to take the first element out of the queue and then we're going to traverse the neighbor nodes. So we're going to get the current nodes color basically is table at first, right? So first, this is basically the index and then the target nodes color should be the opposite color of the current nodes color, 
So the current node, the current node's color is green. Uh, cur sorry, current node's color is red. We're gonna assign the target node's color to be green. If the current node's color is red, we're gonna assign it to green. But if it's green, we're gonna assign it to red, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate each and every single uh, connected nodes, and then we're basically going to say if we uh, if the current node's color right is equal to the uh, is equal to the neighbor node's color, then we're going to return false, okay? Because in this case we cannot have a uh, we cannot have the connected node's color to be the same color as the current node's color. And then what we're going to do is that if this current node is unvisited, if it didn't really mark a color, then what we're going to do is we're going to first add this current node's color. Uh, sorry, current nodes onto the queue, and then we're going to assign the current nodes color to be the target nodes color, right? And this way, we're going to uh, basically iterate each and every single uh, connected nodes, right, or neighbor nodes, and then assign a color that's opposite of the current nodes color. And then if we find a, at the end, if we find, uh, if we traverse the entire uh, graph, right, if the entire graph is not uh, it is is a bipartite. We're just going to return true, right? Because we cannot find a the time complexity for this case. Uh, for this algorithm, is going to be big O of n times v. So n is number of nodes that we have in the graph, and then v is basically uh, in this case, let's say call it e, right? Uh, v e is basically the edges, number of edges that we're iterating, and you can see here we basically do a BFS to search to search all the nodes that we have in our graph. And then we're just only traversing that, we're just only visit that node once, right? And then you can see here, we're basically going to iterate all the edges that we have for each and every single node. So that's why we have n times e. And then for the space complexity, in this case, is going to be big O of n. And the reason why we have big O of n is n is the number of nodes that we have in our, uh, in our graph. And the reason why we have space complexity big O of n is because we're going to have a queue that saves all the nodes that we have, right? Add the, the, the unvisited nodes onto the queue so that we can visit them. And then um, and then we also, you can see here, we also have a table that also has a size of uh, big O of n, right? So therefore the space complexity is gonna be big O of n and time complexity is gonna be big O of n times e, 